Hey Moco Mavens! So today I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful, reflective, rich colored pressed pigments all on your own. Stay tuned. So first what I'm doing is I'm actually taking out, I had some old um, eyeshadow palettes that I was not using anymore. And I figured they're basically just sitting in my studio. I'm not using them. Uh, so what I'm doing is taking a paring knife and I'm literally just plucking the eyeshadows out of the old container. Now what I'm doing with that same paring knife is, as you can see, I'm just digging the old eyeshadow colors out because what I'm gonna do once I'm finished um, taking all of the color out is I'm going to actually wash them and then spray them with alcohol so that I can reuse them. And if you see, they look like little coins in my hand, but this is actually what an empty eyeshadow uh, container looks like. Some of the colors I decided to keep because they would be good transitional colors, as you can see. Um, but for the most part, I took all of them out. And then this grid here that I'm ripping off was something that I had added so that I knew sort of what color tones uh, those tones reminded me of. Now what I have here on my studio floor are bag baggies, basically, of different pigment colors that I'm going to be using to make my new eyeshadow palette. So the first thing that we're going to need for our eyeshadow palette is pressing liquid. And it's just really a mixture of glycerin and alcohol, a little bit of uh, equal of both. And then I've got pigments. You can use your own pigments, your glitters. Um, these are the cleaned eyeshadow pans. And then you'll need a quarter because that's what we're gonna use to press the liquid out. Last, you'll need a mixing stick. And this is just a mascara wand, but you could use a Q-tip or um, a toothpick. And then you'll need a spatula. So what I'm doing with the pan press method, I'm actually going to make the eyeshadow in the actual pan itself. So I just used some pigment that I had, maybe like a deep green tone. And then I added a little bit of gold sparkle to it. Now what I'm doing is I'm dropping about five drops of the pressing liquid there and I'm taking the edge of my mascara wand like I said you could use your own q-tip you could use um, a, a, a toothpick as well and I'm just mixing it inside of the pan itself this is a much messier option I just kind of like sometimes to play with color and stuff so sometimes I'll mix it in the pan but this is definitely like a messier option I'm going to show you a cleaner option in a little bit but what I'm doing now is I'm just mixing the colors together with the top of my spatula to see what the color sort of looks like. Um, and I, I'm assuming I could put a little bit more in here, so I'm just adding a little bit more to it. And there we go again. As I add more, I also add more pressing liquid. And I'm just mixing all of that together inside of the pan. If you can look at my fingers, you can tell my fingers are starting to get a little dirty. But... Here we go, once everything was mixed, I went on and sort of flattened it in there and it created a paste. And now I'm just testing the color on the back of my hand to see what the final color looks like. I want a little bit more sparkle in it, the color was still a bit flat. So each time I add powder or sparkle, I actually add a few more drops of the pressing liquid as well. And as you notice, I'm just mixing it all together testing it on my hand again to see what it looks like. Although I like how reflective it is, I actually want to have some chunks of glitter. So I put a little glitter in there and then I'm adding the more pressing liquid. And as you see me right now, I'm just mixing it together and then we'll get a chance to see what this looks like. So through the process, as you notice, Every time I add a tone, I go ahead and add pressing liquid with it and then I test it on my hand. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking a tissue, I place the tissue on top of the eyeshadow pan. I then put a quarter on top of that to press down and what that does is it presses out any excess liquid. So any excess glycerin, any excess alcohol, it presses it out. 
the drier you can press your shadow the quicker it will dry so if you only press it once you'll still have a lot of liquid in there and it may take two days for it to dry but if, as you see I'm really putting pressure on there to dry that out and there is my eyeshadow it's a beautiful color let me test it really quickly so you all can see what it ends up looking like it's a beautiful smoky green tone with gold flecks and also larger flecks of glitter what I did just now was added a little glitter to it so if I were going to put it on my eye that's what it would look like the second method is the container method. I like this method a lot better. As you can see, I have a little bowl here and I'm just adding the pigment inside the bowl. Let me just tell you this, guys. I don't usually measure the amount of pigment that I have. I always figure if I have a lot more um, mixture than will go in an eyeshadow pan, then I'll just make two pans of it. I, I don't mix like, oh, a quarter of this and a teaspoon of that, I, I don't care. So what I'm doing, in this one, I'm trying to make a rose gold tone. So what I've done is I've added two sort of um, melon tones, and then I added some gold sparkle. Isn't that so, so stinking pretty? I love it. I love these colors. So I added like a light peachy tone, and then I added like a deeper orangey tone, and then I added the gold sparkle and then the mixing liquid. So obviously this is going to be a much neater option. This is the option that I recommend doing because you mix it in the bowl, it turns into a paste, and as you see, I just scoop it right out. I am going to add a, a bit more though because that's not enough. Once I press that down, that won't be enough to create a full eyeshadow pan, and I want it to be full. So what I'm going to end up doing is adding a little bit more... Um, pigment to that the color so far though is pretty I, I still just want to do a little bit more so first I'm going to press take my quarter I'm going to press the liquid out and then I'm going to do it a few more times to really get that uh, excess liquid off of the shadow let's see I'm going to do it again press that liquid out and you see I mean I'm pressing really 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 hard and I, I believe I'm going to there we go Perfect, perfect. So, actually, no, I'm not going to add a lot more pigment to this. I will, however, add some glitter to it because I did like how that color came out. It's really pretty on the skin. And it's a rose gold tone, um, and it, it's got a really pretty uh, reflective uh, appearance to it on the skin. The last thing I'm going to do, though, I did want a little bit more gold sparkle on the top of it and I, I didn't mix it in because I've already pressed it but I'm just gonna go ahead and, and put a little bit more on top of it and then what this is doing that was just pure alcohol and I'm just pressing the glitter now into the actual eyeshadow pan it still remains pretty high on the top but it does incorporate itself a bit into the shadow color itself and next you I'm going to reveal to you all the custom palette that I made. I showed you how I made two, but I actually made 20 something colors. So here we go. Here's the reveal. And here's the palette. I've got some blue, some burgundy, some black, some taupe, uh, pinks, purples, bronze. And here we go. I'm just going to start doing some quick swatches for you. Now this was a black that I made with um, a little bit of sparkle in it. Next we have the first color that I actually made, that, green, that hazy green with the gold flecks. Third is a silver gray tone. Fourth is a bronze, like a chocolatey bronze. And if you notice, when I swipe my finger, I can swipe my finger multiple times. That shows you the richness of the pigments. That was a burgundy tone. And then I did the orange, a sparkly orange. I've also got a beautiful gold, and it's got a lot of gold glitter in it as well. There's our taupe tone. So here we go thus far just so you can see those colors. Next we've got another sort of brown bronze and then there is our blue, it's like a periwinkle blue. 
I've got a sort of sage green. And don't worry, I know I'm going through these pretty fast, but you'll be able to see um, at the end I slow it down. There's another blue-gray tone that's really reflective. Then we have our chocolate that's really like a warm chocolatey bronze. It's gorgeous on my skin. It's really great for smoky eye. That would be more of a tan sparkle. Um, and there we go. This is the slowed down version of it. So you really get to see some of those colors and how reflective they are. So if you can't find the kind of colors that you're looking for in the store, make them yourself. See you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed.